Now, if you thought there was some tense teammate rivalries in 2023, you'd better strap in because I have a feeling that 2024 is going to be spicy on a whole other level. Because it's clear that the situation with the drivers and their motivations this year in particular has changed. Because of the overwhelming number of drivers out of contract at the end of this season, I suspect that a lot of them are going to have more of a in it for themselves attitude towards how they race this season and perhaps also thinking less towards the greater good of the team whether it's looking to make a step up towards a bigger team or trying to find a new one because their existing one is taken or simply just dealing with a teammate who's putting the pressure on things like team orders or just simply doing favors to help them along isn't going to fly so this means now a lot of drivers are going to want to sell themselves maximize their performances showcase their abilities and like i said even little things like giving your teammate a drs toe just isn't going to go down well so let's get straight into this and see which teammate rivalries will erupt this season okay so i'm kicking this off with a driver pairing with a result which can only really kind of go one way and it is verstappen and perez at red bull everybody knows which way this is going to go except for team perez and there lies the problem. He's still kind of convinced he can put up a championship fight and he's been saying some things in the press and yeah, this isn't going down very well with Max or perhaps with people at Red Bull at all. If he just took a leaf out of the Eddie Irvine how to be a number two driver book, everything would be fine, but he hasn't done that. I mean, publicly they seem okay together, but there does seem to be kind of a darkness that exists between them that we've seen time to time or heard from time to time through radio communications. And from the outside, it looks like that Perez got his contract extension just by the skin of his teeth. And if I was a betting man, I would say that this is probably going to be his last season now at Red Bull. And this means to secure a seat for next year and wipe out any memories of 2023, he is going to have to try and push Max as hard as he can and really sell himself to all these other teams and of course this won't go down very well with Max especially if Perez is taking points off him or even slowing him down in races but can you imagine the scenario if Red Bull announced Perez's replacement mid-season or even right at the start of the season maybe at the Monaco Grand Prix Perez will totally be in it for himself by then he'll start to wind up Max on and off the track and although what a block of concrete Max Verstappen can be. We've seen from time to time that Perez can kind of get under his skin sometimes. And a Perez who is out of contract, and by this point might not even care anymore, could be very irritating towards Max. And who knows, perhaps knowing that he doesn't have a drive for next year could be a massive weight off his shoulders. It could be that release he kind of wanted. And we might even start to see the Perez that we saw from a few years ago. The Perez which earned his drive at Red Bull in the first place. I honestly can't wait for his tell-all book after he's finished at Red Bull because that is going to be controversy defined. Now, all this tension isn't going to break Verstappen's heart, let's be honest, far from it. But he could find that a Sergio Perez who isn't playing ball or isn't happy to do little favours and jobs here and there might make the championship slightly harder for him to win this year. Anyway, moving on. Now, these two, on the face of it, anyway, have a pretty good relationship and work quite well together. And I'm talking about Norris and Piastri at McLaren. A seriously great young lineup who both have amazing potential in F1. Now, last season was Lando Norris's first time as the senior driver in the team. And he did very, very well in the second half of the season once McLaren had got the car together. But... His reactions when Piastri outperformed him and did better was very, very telling. Particularly in that sprint race, we saw a side of Norris I don't think that we haven't seen before. In previous teammate lineups, Norris was the younger driver out of the pairing, and this was also kind of a convenient get-out-of-jail-free card for him, which he could play at a time if he made a mistake. And now with Piastri on board, he doesn't have this anymore. Now, Norris is well overdue a win. He's currently at 104 starts and is approaching Jensen Button territory, I would say, of starts without a win. Button had 113 starts before he won his first Grand Prix and Norris knows, I think, that this year he has to finally get that win. Otherwise, I think it's going to start to get to him and although he's got this big long-term contract in McLaren now, I think he's going to look and try and fast-track his career somewhere else. Now, he has great ability. We've seen this time and time again, but I have a feeling he's concerned about what he's up against in Oscar Piastri. I mean, Piastri is by no way the finished article here and he does have some edges which need rounding off, but he 
on his day is a real threat to Norris. So the potential for devastation if Piastri just slides in next season and wins that first Grand Prix before Norris, this could have enormous effects on the dynamic there. And this is because Norris is, or is supposed to be, the McLaren guy. He's the senior driver, he's got the long-term contract, and all the expectation is on him. But the thing is as well, Piastri is gonna have his manager, Mark Webber, in his ear, who's going to be telling him to push Norris all the way as much as he can and not to settle for second fiddle. Sure, Webber saw enough of that at Red Bull and he won't want Piastri to make the same mistakes that he did. So if finally this year McLaren can string together a consistent season, start and end things well and not falter there at the start or the end, a win could certainly be on the table, especially if Red Bull slip up sometimes. And so with that potential win on the table combined with all the pressure and expectation, we could potentially see Norris start to boil over. And with Piastri, as we've seen, being cool as a cucumber, this is, could potentially frustrate Norris, could make him start to question himself, and even if McLaren is the place for him. So whilst the pair of them will always be kind of nice and smiley for sponsors and social media bits, behind the scenes, I think is going to be tense as hell because they are not going to give an inch for each other at all at any point this season, even if it helps McLaren on the whole. So yeah, that's McLaren for you. Now these next two, up until about a month ago, were probably the most compatible driver pairing in F1. And I'm talking, of course, about Sainz and Leclerc at Ferrari. Now for Leclerc, not much has changed. He's still the golden boy of Ferrari. He's got his long-term contract. But it's when you start to look at Sainz is where things start to kind of get interesting here. So straight away, Sainz doesn't have a contract yet for 2025, not that we know of anyway. So now he's going to be in a position where he is going to absolutely sell himself as much as he can to secure a seat because he doesn't have one to fall back on now. He is going to want to push Leclerc all the way and beat him as much as he can, finishing ahead of him in the Drivers' Championship is gonna be his absolute priority this year. So this previous kind of teamwork, Talladega night, shake and bake thing that Leclerc and Sainz once had, where they kind of help each other out sometimes, isn't gonna happen this year, I don't think. I don't think that's gonna fly at all. Now, it's not Leclerc that Sainz is going to want to teach a lesson, it's going to be Ferrari. Sainz is gonna to want to show them that they have made a complete mistake signing Hamilton rather than him. But the knock-on effect from Sainz trying to do this could see Leclerc suffer. Signs this year will be completely in it for himself and Leclerc could get frustrated by this, especially if Ferrari haven't learned any lessons from last year. I mean, if they're still making bad strategy calls, pit stop errors, and there's still reliability issues, this means that results are still gonna be few and far between. And another thing to consider is that because Sainz is leaving, Leclerc is gonna be getting all the new parts, all the new bits of kit for the car. Ferrari, you might say in the last 30 years, have never treated their drivers equally, and I don't see a reason why they're gonna start now. In my opinion, I think we're gonna see a different side to Sainz this year, and these smooth operator, genius calls that he's made in the past, he's gonna keep completely for himself. If Leclerc has all these new parts on the car but still can't overtake Sainz on track on merit, it's not Sainz's problem. We could even start to see Leclerc finally lose his composure at Ferrari. Especially with Hamilton joining next season, this is Leclerc's last chance potentially as Ferrari's golden boy. So with knowing what he faces next season, Leclerc is going to absolutely drive his socks off and remind Ferrari that he is the top dog. But with Sainz on his own mission, we could see worlds collide at Maranello this year. And with Ferrari having to deal with a big name arriving, Mercedes are gonna have to deal with that same big name leaving. And with these two already having some tense moments together, but putting their differences aside, I am certain of one thing this year, and it is that it is going to go off between Hamilton and Russell saw this year at Mercedes. The pair of them were tripping over each other, harming each other's races, and were visibly tense when they were together. And this is when they were both signed to Mercedes for the foreseeable future. But this has now changed. Hamilton is off to Ferrari, and Russell is gonna to want to show Mercedes that he is the man to take Mercedes forward into a new era. The pair of them have everything to gain this year. Hamilton is gonna to want to arrive at Ferrari on the front foot after a decent 2024 season. Russell is gonna to want to show Mercedes that last season was just a blip and he's gonna to want to beat Hamilton comfortably this year, and to ultimately show Toto Wolff that he is the man for 2025 and beyond, and not whoever is gonna be taking Hamilton's spots. Now, I'm sure there'll be disagreements, clashes on track. The radio communications between them and the pit wall are gonna be absolutely savage, and I also doubt that Toto Wolff is going to have the same patience 
I think, with Hamilton this year, especially if he starts criticising the car. All the previous pillow talk between them of, I know the car is bad and just to drive it anyway, will be gone completely. Neither driver will want to help or assist the other or give up an inch, basically. I guess George might if he's ordered to, but Hamilton, I think, is going to be looking out completely for number one. And yes, some people might say that this is business as usual. But as the season progresses and Hamilton slowly starts to feel himself being pushed out of the team, I suspect that his attitudes towards Russell and even Toto Wolff could suffer massively and also vice versa too. In my opinion, the Hamilton and Russell dynamic has always been a bit off. Even if Hamilton was staying, it would still be off. I kind of felt that Hamilton never really liked the idea of Russell coming into the team. And maybe this is because Hamilton might have seen Russell as his replacement or even a threat. Look, even if they were both at Mercedes for the next two or three years, it would still get incredibly spicy between them. And from what we've seen previously, they both want to be first, they don't want to help each other, and are just completely incompatible, it seems, as drivers. So yep, Toto's gonna have to do some man management this year, I think. And finally, the most depressing, but yet entertaining driver dynamic we have on the grid that I think will just explode is going to be Ocon and Gasly at Alpine. But wait, let me just explain myself when I say depressing. It's not like these two are disagreeing and falling out over wins, pole positions, podiums, things like that. Their beef seems to be around positions like 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, or even lower. And given the state of Alpine's management, it could be the same story this year. It's like these two can never focus really on the greater good of Alpine the team and just look at what's in it for them. Perhaps they kind of see Alpine as a stepping stone to somewhere else. But I do sense more of a bitterness from Ocon towards Gasly rather than Gasly towards Ocon. Gasly, credit to him, has come into what was supposed to be Ocon's team and has outperformed him and also kind of comes out of the pair as the more consistent and in my opinion likable. Now as we know these two have a history and they both want to be the star at Alpine but it just seems that their level of disagreement and beef with each other isn't warranted given where Alpine currently are in the constructor standings and just their overall performances from race to race. I mean sure they got a couple of podiums last year but overall they were just fighting for the scraps left over from the bigger teams and I suspect that this year it could be even worse with Visa Cash Up RB potentially being a force using Red Bull parts and Williams having somewhat of a resurgence as well. And the famine mentality this creates regarding positions isn't helped by the fact that both Ocon and Gasly are out of contract at the end of the season. Ocon recently came out saying that he still has strong links to Mercedes and is still their junior driver, despite being 27. But as well, Gasly is also out of contract and probably has an eye on somewhere else, but he's being a bit more subtle about it, I think. I would say both of them are keen to move on, but know that they had to put in some solid efforts where they are to convince teams of their value. Might be difficult this year, and with potential opportunities being so few, these two are gonna be scrapping with each other till the bitter end. So I'd say expect plenty of collisions, plenty of penalties, it is Alpine after all, and plenty of arguments over the team radio. Overall though, for these teams, in my opinion, I think 2024 is not going to be remembered for teamwork and contributing to the greater good. I think that it's gonna be remembered for drivers selling themselves, being in it for themselves, and just doing what suits them this year. For many, I guess, you could argue that 2024 might be seen as somewhat of a transition year for them. This year, a lot of them are gonna to want to maximize their results, and start 2025 in the best possible shape that they can be, in the best possible team they can be as well. So yeah, lots to look out for there, I think. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know your thoughts on some of the driver pairings we talked about just there. I'm Paul, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.